Hi there booktube, this is Emma from Emma's Bookish Lifestyle. Sorry, I'm just going to open a drink because I'm feeling a bit parched. And uh, today is a library book haul. Let me just take a quick slap. And um, I went in today, I'd just finished Death Note, uh, the Black Edition Volume 1, um, which is a compendium of Volumes 1 and 2. Which I really enjoyed and um, I liked the kind of the Japanese maintenance of reading it even though it was in, obviously translated into English and the way that you obviously read it in a slightly different sort of pattern on the page to a normal graphic novel. I really really enjoyed that. Um, in regard to the book on Leda Grey I have to be brutally honest and say I DNF'd it. It showed a little bit of promise when it started to go into the diary elements but to be brutally frank with you it just wasn't keeping my attention it wasn't drawing me back and you know when you've got a book like that and there's so many other wonderful books out there to read i just couldn't see the point in continuing to waste my time with it um so i went back and took that and um, Death Note Volume 1 and 2 and uh, The Letters from the Lighthouse by Emma Carroll back to my library and on returning them I was really fortunate because I'd looked online on my little app on my phone because after um, reading Darian with Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures uh, I really wanted to read some more Con Iggledon but from the sort of the historical fiction element. Now I'm a big fan of um, English history generally actually. There's not a specific time period that I'm, I'm interested in. I love all history related to the um, English history. However, um, obviously majority of us know the most about the Tudors and the War of the Roses and that sort of thing. So after seeing Mel broach into Stormbird, I was fortunate enough today, despite not having it on the app, it said they didn't have it in my local library, to get War of the Roses Stormbird, which is the first, and War of the Roses Trinity, which is uh, the second. Beautiful covers, I have to say. Um, very shiny, very magpie-ish, aren't they? Um, so, yes, two clodhopper of a books. I mean, they're not petite little books. Uh, the first one is just under 500 pages, and the second one looks to be going into 550. So it's one of those ever-expanding um series of books I think. I think there's one more left in the trilogy of that. Uh, the next book I picked up was London Lies Beneath by Stella Duffy. This I've seen on quite a few um, booktube channels and uh, was keen to read. I think it's been sitting on my Amazon TBR but I saw it in the library today and thought well it's there in the library. Let's use the functionality and save some pennies Emma. The next one is Everyone is Watching by Megan Bradbury. Now this is an unusual one for me. Uh, it was on the New Inn shelf um, and when I had a look at it I wasn't really 100% sure what it was going to be about. Um, and I don't think I've seen it on any other channels. Apologies if it has been on other channels but I haven't noticed that. So I'll read you the synopsis. I know a lot of people do that. And I do apologise. I do. I am trying to improve by doing my own self-synopsis rather than reading the back, but it's not always possible. So this is a novel of New York, the story of a city. In 1891, Walt Whitman is returning to New York at the end of his life, knowing only it can inspire him. The city he saw built is changing still. By 1922, Robert Moses, the man who built modern New York, stares out across Long Island and imagines what it might become. In 1967, Robert Maplethorpe is searching for love, excitement and fame in the city of his dreams. And 40 years later, Edmund White walks the same streets remembering nights of ecstasy and euphoria. 
This is a novel of New York, of the art that could only have been made there and the lives that have built the city itself. Now, having visited New York many years ago um, before the 9-11 incident, it is an amazing, amazing city and I believe the residents of New York are an extremely strong and powerful um, contingent in America. I, I just believe they're the most welcoming individuals I've ever met. Uh, I can probably say that about other areas of America when I get there, but unfortunately I haven't been anywhere other than Florida. Um, and Florida was equally as friendly, so, you know, we're, doing, we're not doing too bad, two for two. Um, I'm looking forward to spending more time in America, definitely. I'd like to do uh, Route 66, however cliched that might sound, but i really like to do that. I'd like to do Los Angeles, um, San Francisco and Las Vegas, um, and so many, many other places, Houst, um, Houston, Washington. Uh, I'd even probably not mind a visit to Detroit, although I'm not really sure what I would find there. I know it's the centre, or it was the centre of car building. So I also p picked myself up a non-fiction. Now this is called The Man Who Was Jekyll and Hyde by Rick Wilson. And the reason that I picked it up was, one, because it's a non-fiction. So it's telling us about the man that inspired Jekyll and Hyde, which intrigued me because I didn't realise it was based on a real life um, individual. So I had to read the synopsis on the back and it says, he was a respected cabinet maker and counsellor by day, but Deacon William Brodie changed into a sinister thieving monster when darkness fell on the old city of Edinburgh. Cleverly employing his respectable reputation to access the richest members of society before stealing from them, as a masked burglar, he used the resulting illicit money to fund yet another life, with five children and two mistresses. But Brodie, whose chilling story inspired Robert Louis Stevenson to create the classic tale of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde about a century later, came fatally unstuck when an accomplice informed on him. Then neither his ill-gotten gains nor his plans to cheat the hangman could save him. Rick Wilson traces the increasingly desperate double life of Brodie, from his first taste of crime through to his public disgrace and execution, hanging on the very gallows he allegedly conceived himself. Sounds great, doesn't it? And it's not a massive book. I mean, it's 185 pages, and it, you know, it to me sounds fascinating. So there you go. And last but not least, I picked up Sebastian Barry's Days Without End. Again, uh, this has been obviously shown a lot on YouTube. It's been put forward for a lot of um, awards over the last uh, year. And it's something that really interests me. It's a part of history I don't know a lot about. I don't know a lot about American history. Um, obviously, it's fiction. But it just sounded really compelling and everybody who's given a review on it has said how wonderful it was and how they enjoyed it. Now, I do have a confession. I have this on my Kindle. Uh, but at the moment, because of uh, my health condition, I'm not trying to spend too much time on screens. So I saw this in the library and thought, well, what better way of reading it than by the book itself? And um, because it's in the library, it's not cost me anything, so it's not like I'm buying it twice. And if I really enjoy it, I've still got it on my Kindle to read it, um, a second time later on. So that's all my books from the library book haul for today. I hope you're all well. I hope you're having a good week. And I'll speak to you soon. Take care for now, Butchie. Bye.